going on, guys, 20th of June. And a um, little bit of information out there just in the last day or so since yesterday. There was no market activity today. We're looking at other data that's come out with respect to the National Association of Home Builders saying that we're starting to see a little bit more activity, a little more interest in homes, but supply is low. So builders are not giving much in the form of incentives. They're doing a couple things here and there, but they don't have to get in the dirt hardly because people are demanding housing. They're starting to see, hey, we're settling into this rate situation. Uh, people aren't holding out as much for the interest rates as far as from what I can tell. And sitting here thinking, hey, if I wait and I wait, maybe the interest rates get better. Guys, cost of housing is not going down. Interest rates are not going down. The longer you sit on the sidelines, the greater chance you're just going to pay more. What I find really interesting is you go back to when we had interest rates of 2 and 3%, massive, massive amount of people buying homes. And then you had realtors saying, hey, if you want to come into the market, you got to be ready to offer 30000 over market just to get in the game. And nobody bitched. Everybody's like, okay, that's just the name of the game. Now the interest rates are higher. You're not having to play that game. But everybody's like complaining about the rates when we don't control it at all. But yet nobody bitch to the realtors when they're told them, hey, you got to walk in with 30 G's right out of the gate or 30 percent higher just to get in the game. Everybody's like, oh, that's just the way the market works. Why is it such a hard thing for people to understand that's just the way the market works and the interest rates go up? They want to blame the lenders. It's not that that has nothing to do with us. Right. So there are some lenders out there. They're cutting corners. They're cutting margins. They're doing everything they can to try and buy the market. If that's the kind of lender you get to work with, guess what? That's what you get is cheap people that don't know what the hell they're doing. A good chance you may not close. A lot of those deals blow up. And then if you have to go back into contract, send your contract, they may raise your price. You're going to pay for that rate one way or the other. So I would say find somebody you want to work with, sign somebody, get the deal done, get it locked early because the rates are going nothing but up. I've said this a couple of times. I had people shop, 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 shop so damn much, hoping they're going to find that lower rate. They end up taking a higher rate than they would have had. They just locked with me to begin with. Instead of shopping around for the lower rate, even if they close with somebody else, the rate went higher because the rates went up. Just the way it goes. So uh, let's talk about this. Um, definitely want you guys to be a little reminder on this. Sound of Freedom coming out. Uh, this shows you where you can just go in. You can book the for tickets. It's angel.com, which is Angel Studios. They're the ones that are putting it out. Uh, go in there, find, you know, put in your zip code, find one close to where you're at. July 4th, when it comes out, book it. Get tickets. Now, get in there, see this movie. It is a game changer as far as your understanding of what's going on in the world of human trafficking. There is uh, information. I've actually had conversations with him over at OUR several times about this. We talked about some things going on with, uh, you know, he was working with Mel Gibson to put together a documentary multi-part series. Um, guys, that guy, he caught some help from, from Hollywood with respect to some of the stuff he says or had said. I guarantee he's going to get some hell again here real soon because when he starts exposing this and puts this documentary out, they're going to just hammer him. You're going to see the news just hammering that guy all over again with old stuff. They're going to hand hammering with, with, with old sins, right? Don't listen to that shit. Go see what he has to say. I mean, he's working hand in hand with the guys who are out there on the front line working this out. These guys are working with him. So don't take the bullshit that people want to say about somebody's past and try and uh, basically erase what he's trying to say right now. Very interesting stuff. So be interesting to see what he has that he comes up with this. Now, here's another very interesting article. I'm using interesting a lot today because I guess a lot of interesting stuff. So Wall Street Journal, we'll look for this article uh, that says Instagram is basically connecting a vast pedophile network. When you start looking at the details of this article, Stanford University and the University of Massachusetts Amherst had done a study and did a bunch of dang research. If you read this article, you start to find that even though there's a lot of information in there that they're spoiling, that they're supposed to be controlling and overseeing, they're not stopping a lot of the things that would get people to be able to find more things in the pedophile world, right? So a lot of this uh, human trafficking, a lot of sex trafficking, a lot of underage sex stuff is literally very searchable. And then just like Instagram does for you, you start to search things. It figures out what you like to look at, what you spend your time staring at, your camera's picking that up. And then it's going to start, the AI involved is going to send you more stuff that you would like. They're doing the same thing with the pedophile shit. They're literally loading people up with where you can find more of it. So read the article, see what Instagram and Meta has to say about this. Um, but it's something I don't think is going away either. Um, something that we got to battle like crazy. Some people say, oh, I'm just leaving Instagram. No, flood it with good stuff. Flood it with better stuff. Flood it with information for people. 
try and overwhelm that shit. Um, and I hopefully somebody, somebody out there just get the balls go after these some bitches hard when it comes to this electronic stuff. I think that the uh, when it comes to big tech, it's just whatever they can do to placate the people and whatever they can do to keep making money. I don't need to give a shit in reality. Some do, a lot of them don't. Most of them don't. So let's take a look at the market. So as I was saying, you know, interest rates don't look like they're going down. This 200-day moving average has been a formidable ceiling every time we've hit it, right? Every time, every time, every time. It's amazing how many people that are experts have said float into these things and like, and you get, get smashed. I'm going to continue to say, lock it. Look, we've been coming right up on this 200-day moving average. We've been pushing locks just this last week. One, two, three, four times we've hit this area here. We've been pushing locks. We're getting ready to hit that 200-day moving average again. I don't think that we're going to be able to break through it. In fact, we have all the moving averages here converging again. Um, in see here, we got the 100-day, the 200-day, and it looks like we've got the 50-day all right here converging, and that's a heavy, heavy ceiling above where we sit right now. Therefore, pushing the mortgage-backed securities continued down. I'm going to show you here as I expand forward. I'm going to keep pushing it down. We're going to break through. I'm sure this particular support. And we're going to be using that as a, as a ceiling, and we'll continue to keep going going up as far as rates are concerned as this continues to go down. Now, there is, of course, speculation. There might be some money coming into the market. China could be bringing, sending some capital into the mortgage backed securities. I don't know. They just did a cut on their, like kind of like their Fed rate cut, if you will. Um, we'll see what happens with that. I'm not certain that that's going to be enough or that's going to change the trajectory. It have to be trillions of dollars, change the trajectory. And so we'll see, or at least hundreds of billions. But that gets vaporized pretty quick when people buy houses, then they got to get more money. It has to be keep getting replenished. So I don't know that that's going to change the trajectory anytime soon. I personally believe that we're going to continue to see rates going up. 30-year fixed, always your friend. Because if you're wrong, right, and if I'm wrong, let's just say I'm wrong, the rates go up. You do a 30-year fix with me, and in a year, and, and the rates go, go down. Let's say I'm completely wrong, the rates go down. Refinance if you want. That's what you would do if you had an arm anyway. But if the rates go up, you're protected. So control what you can control for as long as you can control it. I'll keep saying that over and over and over again. Go look up that Sound of Freedom. Go get those tickets. Go check that out. Love to get your comments on that one. Um, I've seen it personally two times at private viewings. Amazing movie. I'm not telling you something that's going to suck. I'm telling you something you definitely need to go. It's going to change, change your viewpoint on some things. Appreciate you guys. And I'll talk to you on Friday.